Hey guys, it's uh, Shane Spiel, and I just made a guitar out of a boat oar. I bought this uh, boat oar on Amazon for 25 bucks. As a boat oar or a canoe paddle, it sucks. It's a horrible paddle for a canoe. However, it's a fantastic piece to make an instrument from. I've got all the plans over at cbgiddy.com slash news. That's right, cbgiddy.com slash news. Poo, 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 poo. This is just a really simple instrument. Uh, it's just two strings on a big piece of wood, the wood being this four foot long boat paddle. Uh, there are no frets, the frets are wood burned on, you play it with the slide. Uh, as you can see here it has a CB Giddy Giddy Bucker pickup. The bridge is nothing but a threaded bolt and I use these cool string ferrules uh, to feed the strings through the back. It also has a strat jack turned upside down. The action's a little bit high, but I didn't care because it's going to be used with a slide, and quite honestly, I like a little bit of a higher action for slide. The tuning pegs were left over from my cigar box mandolin project, and I even used the same type of threaded bolt for the nut. Again, this is a very simple instrument. Uh, you could probably build it in a day or two, and it sounds fantastic. So let's get into this. I want to thank CB Giddy for this project because uh, they supplied all the parts, with the exception of the canoe paddle, the boat oar. I documented the whole process, as you'll see, but I also showed mistakes I made. When I started, I wanted to use parts left over from my cigar box mandolin project. And I did use the tuners, tuners were left over, but I wanted to use the bridge that was left over, things like that. Well, I switched out the bridge. Um, I intended on using a Giddy Bomb pickup in here, and as you'll see, it just wasn't the right fit. The Giddy Bomb pickup was too powerful. I had a metal cover for it, a, uh, it was copper actually, and the whole thing became microphonic and it just didn't sound well for this instrument. So this has been trial and error the entire time. I want to take you on a journey with it. Um, it is a 27 and a half inch scale, baritone scale. I strung it with an E and an A string from a pack of guitar strings. So it's the two lowest strings of a pack of guitar strings, but I have it tuned even lower to an open C power chord, which is C and G. And with a little slap back echo, you can get. Now with this guitar, the tone reminds me of bands like the Presidents of the United States of America. especially the band Morphine. The Giddy Bucker pickup is perfect for this instrument. I just love it because it gets the lows, it gets the highs. It is in a bridge position, which means it would capture more treble. However, I can dial my amp in. The Giddy Bucker is very forgiving for amp settings. I can get some really gnarly sounds if I pull back the bass and kick up the treble.
So that's how it sounds, but let's get into how I built it. What are we calling this? The baritone boat oar guitar? And uh, this boat oar, I, it's cheap. Bought it off of Amazon. By the way, I painted the blue end on here. I saw a picture of an antique boat oar and it had the end painted on some sort of ocean blue. So I had some spray paint, I taped it off, painted the end here. Well, what I noticed is I'm messing with this, this is a cheap pine oar. Well, it's got a lot of bow to it. And if I'm gonna add a couple strings and put them to tension, this thing is going to just warp like crazy. Now, I'm going to play slide with it, which means fretting isn't a problem. However, I do want to beef up this neck. If this is pine and this is going to bend a little, I'm going to take a strip. I have a strip of maple. This is like 3 8 inch thick maple. It was from another project. I never throw any wood away. I'm going to glue it to the back of the neck, right to where the nut is going to be. It's supposed to be a 27 and a half inch scale. So it means the nut is here and the bridge will go somewhere right around here. I am going to glue this on the back and it's going to come into the body just a little bit right there. And hopefully that will beef up the neck to keep it from warping. And then you won't see it as I play it. It'll look like it's still a boat oar. But just remember, sometimes when we make instruments out of these found objects, it's almost like a stage prop. This isn't purely just a found object that you put something, you've got to do other things uh, to really make it playable. And, you know, just don't tell the audience. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue this back here. I'm also going to drill for the strings where the strings come up through the body. As you try to build one of these yourself, it's all going to, going to depend on what boat or you buy, and it's going to be playing it by ear. Okay, scratch what I said in the last video. I was going to glue this 3 8 inch piece of, uh, 3 8 inch piece of maple to the back of the boat or to make the neck beefier. But I realized if I do that and I go to lay this thing flat, uh, this extra piece is going to get in the way. And there's times where I'm going to need to lay this flat to make, uh, to drill some holes. So I'm holding off on the maple. Look, I just drilled the holes. For the tuners, two pegs there, one goes one way, one goes the other. I'm going to drill the holes where the string ferrules go through here and start trying to figure out where all the parts go. I have a giddy bomb pickup, but now I'm starting to reconsider and I may go with a standard giddy bucker pickup. Uh, still, you know, trying to figure out what I want, how loud I want it, how crazy I want it. Um, the other thing is I'm going to put a strat jack plate in here, but I'm going to do it backwards. So I may do it here or I may do it in the back. I may hide it in the back so that you see mostly a boat oar and less of guitar parts. This is what I've done so far. I've got the tuners mounted in here. Okay, I've got a piece of maple on the back to beef up the neck. I have the string through ferrules drilled and ready to go. I did a little aging on the blue paint on the back here. Just wanted to make it look used and old. Um, and here I drew where the pickup is going to be. I'm gonna route uh, a small area for this, the Giddy Bomb pickup. Look how thick that sucker is. I'm gonna put a Giddy Bomb pickup in there and I'm gonna have just a direct output. No volume knob, just full bore tone from this. In here, I rounded out for the Giddy Bomb pickup. I had a Forstner bit, and you could tell it is dull. There was smoke everywhere because my Forstner bit is so dull, but I just, you know, got all this extra wood out of here. I'm gonna go get my Dremel, and I'm going to clean this up and get the Giddy Bomb pickup mounted in there. I will probably use both glue and CB Giddy's mounting uh, cover for it. I really cleaned out the route for the Giddy Bomb pickup. The Giddy Bomb pickup is going to fit perfectly in here. See here it is right here. I'm going to place it right in the hole that I have ready for it. And I got to watch the wire. I don't want to hurt the wire there. But boom, there it is. And it's mostly flush. I'm going to put a little 
spacer on here and then the copper cover that I purchased from cbgiddy.com. So that's done. And then I added a route here. Earlier I was wondering if I was going to put the jack plate and hide it on the back. Well, I think I want to put it on the front. Well, I have to now. I put the jack plate on the front. It is the usual Strat jack plate, but I turn it upside down so that it's looking like this. I had to route out a little bit of the inside because when this goes and is mounted in right like that, it's going to be sticking into the wood some, so I had to give it a little place of clearing. I'm going to put it on like this. Sorry for the shaky camera. I figured I'd show you how I'm mounting this Giddy Bomb pickup. Uh, I put a whole glob of this E6000 glue. I use this for a lot of different stuff. I get this at Hobby Lobby. I put a glob of it in there, and the Giddy Bomb pickup is going to go over top. And this is just to keep it seated, keep it in place put it like that and then I've got this mounting system from from Giddy that is specifically made for the Giddy bomb and I've got that here and the copper plate which will go over here now I'm going to um, put screws in there and mount it for good but there is the uh, that's how I'm doing the Giddy bomb then I'm going to run, and maybe I could show this without it going crazy. I'm going to run the wire. I did a little groove here. The wire is going to go through the back and out to where the jack is here. And I'll probably put a little cover right on the back here so nothing happens to the wire. I did mount the pickup in, got the pickup mounted. Uh, the wire goes back here to the jack, and if you look, oh, I got a piece of tape here. If you look, I used a little piece of plexiglass as a clear cover, uh, just to keep the wire safe there. Boom. Um, I also just wood burned all the fret markers in there, and at the last minute decided to put anchors as the as the dots, little anchors. They're sort of implied. They're not that great, but hey, it'll look cool on stage. Um, so there we are. It's almost time to string it up. I'm um, just going over the last few things. I've got to make the nut for it and make the bridge. I had to do some other things. First of all, the pickup was giving me hum. So I unplugged this. I took a ground wire and I put it to the bolt. Oh, by the way, I did not use the walnut bridge. It was a little too high. I didn't want to shave it down. I had these just threaded bolts here and I put one there. That's the bridge. Same thing up here. That is the nut. Just threaded bolts. But for this one here I wired a piece of wire around it and soldered it and then ran that wire out to meet and it's grounded with the ground terminal on the jack. So that reduces hum. I wood burned the neck as you can see but I also wood burned the side because as I was playing it I needed to see where I was going and it's tough to move it as I'm watching. Um, I added strap buttons there's one here and then I held it to figure out where the balance was and right near the balance point I put the other strap button so it's nice and it's not going to be diving on the floor it'll just be holding really really nice as I play it and then one other thing I did I had all this extra room up here for the boat oar, and it doesn't make sense but I just wrapped some old boat uh, rope around there almost to make it look like a handle I just wanted to add another piece to the prop because this is a prop uh, this is yes it is a real guitar but um, the idea is the absurdity of it in fact the show that I'm working on the stage is going to look like a junkyard and every piece of junk on the stage is playable so of course you'll see a boat oar there and then I'll have to pick it up and play it well here it is it's done the boat or guitar actually it's not done I want you to notice as I'm talking to the camera in this film clip you can hear my voice go and be echoed into the amp 
That's because the pickup is so microphonic, it is even picking up my voice from that far away. Listen to this. Well, here it is. It's done. Done. The boat or guitar. Two strings tuned to a baritone. Quite honestly, I don't even know what it's tuned to right now. Yeah, as I'm making this video, I'm like getting irritated because I continue to hear a really high end treble. Like anytime I would knock the guitar or talk near it, it would be picked up by the Giddy Bomb pickup. It was obvious this was the wrong pickup for me to use in the guitar. Chord. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm tweaking the boat or guitar right now. If you see here, I took the pickup cover off. It was getting too microphonic. As I was playing it in the amp, it would hear every little tap that I would make. And what I think is going on is this copper top, as I would tap it, um, was exciting the pickup. So I filled the pickup with hot glue. And uh, hopefully that's going to muffle it. Very similar to the way Eddie Van Halen would pot his pickups, uh, wax pot them. So that's what I'm working on. Hey guys, it's Shane Spiel. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I I wanted to be completely honest and truthful about any of these builds that I'm doing. And if I screw up or make a mistake, I'm gonna let you know about it. And I just screwed up big time. Um, so I took the copper cover off and I decided to take some of the hot glue that I put on the Giddy Bomb pickup, and I ruined the Giddy Bomb pickup. It's dead. Completely dead because I used glue on it and it pulled at the copper wires. Um, I killed it. I killed the giddy bucker. But I'm kind of glad that I did it because cbgiddy.com is supplying me with these parts. So I'm going to show you my screw ups so you don't ever have to screw up like that. So now I've got a hole here. And I'm going to get a different Giddy Bucker pickup. I have a couple different ones in my shed. I'm going to put a different Giddy Bucker pickup. And instead of the copper cover, I'm going to put a wooden cover on here. And see if that doesn't get me a better tone than I wanted. Uh, because at the current rate, I couldn't play this through distortion without it feeding back like crazy. And that was because it was microphonic. This was vibrating on top of the pickup, creating a feedback loop, yada, yada, yada. It was giving me problems. So we're going to change the pickup on this. I'm going to put a regular giddy bucker in there. I'm going to put a wooden cover on, and hopefully that's going to give me the tones that I want. We're inventing instruments here. And so anytime you're inventing something, you're going to have some mess ups. And I had one really big mess up today. So I've got an empty control cavity with glue that I had in there. Oh God, it's gross. Um, so I've got to clean this out. I've got to put a different pickup in there and uh, cross my fingers and uh, hope it's better. And I changed the pickup in there. I put a standard giddy bucker in there with a wooden cover. So it's no longer microphonic and I can do all kind of stuff like. <laughs> Okay, one more, one more. Let me get rid of the swell and let me get rid of the slap back. Hold on, hold on. Are you ready? A two string boat or baritone guitar does Black Sabbath. So now what? What do you do with a boat or a guitar? Well, you can write songs about sailing. You can write songs about being up Shit's Creek without a paddle. <laughs> 
Um, allow your instruments to uh, influence your songwriting. And that's kind of what I'm doing with this. I need to figure out a song that would be appropriate for a boat or just like playing a shovel, you know, you would want to do a song about a grave digger. So again, all the parts on this instrument were from cbgiddy.com. I do want to thank CB Giddy for their support. And you can find out all the details for this over at cbgiddy.com slash news. I've got a full blog there. The t-shirt is over at guitarrags.com. In the comments, tell me, where did this quote come from? Somebody leave a comment down there. Where did this quote come from? It's a movie. There's your hint. My name's Shane Spiel. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I just encourage you to go build the craziest, wildest instruments. Yes, even a simple boat oar uh, can be turned into a guitar. And in fact, I'm going to be using this in concert. So go build your own legend. My name's Shane Spiel. Get my music at shanespiel.com. Thanks.